young life, I remember this life. It was uh, a hard life. It's kind of the hardest part about getting into medical school. I mean, the hardest part about becoming a doctor, even after it's gone through the damage all the medical school at this point. But the hardest part was the, the stress that, um, that you all are feeling kind of right now when you're thinking about getting in because, let's face it, once you get in, you're going to be a doctor. There are very few people that can, you know, fail out. I mean, they have to really, you have to really, really want to not become a doctor to feel like medical school. It's basically the way it works. Um, the weed out process starts uh, here. And so, you know, this school is a, is a school, I'm an ODU class of 2012. Um, it's a school of 26,000 people, our students. Um, and unfortunately, very few people end up going into medicine. Um, this school is underrepresented in, in the field of medicine. There are, there are alumni are underrepresented in the field of medicine. Um, you know, um, for the various number of circumstances, um, that, you know, I really aim to try to uh, bridge the gap between, um, you know, I think that most of us, you know, at this school, if you look at the demographics of this school, a lot of people come from, you know, working class families, people come from, most people's parents aren't physicians, most people's parents aren't Fortune 500 CEOs, um, most people's parents aren't dead. I go to school with a lot of people who, that's more the rule than the, the, than the exception. Um, at this point now. Um, and you see, I remember uh, sitting in class one day and there were these two kids that were my classmates were talking about going to high school together. And they went to a school called Milton Academy. And it, I was on Facebook a couple days later and I just like looked up Milton Academy on Facebook and I had like seven friends like Milton Academy. What is the deal with this Milton Academy? And I realized that seven of my classmates went to the same high school in Massachusetts, Milton Academy. Um, where um, one of the presidents of the United States went, where uh, many people, uh, many you know, Nobel laureates have, have went to that high school. The, uh, many, many people went there and you realize that they just had a totally different experience than, than most of us had. Um, they, they made it at the point where they entered Canada, um, or they were born, and they were able, they, they never had any doubt about their abilities. They never had any they never had the problem of not knowing anybody who was a neurosurgeon. They never had the problem of not knowing anybody who was um, a Fortune 500 CEO or had done, a, you know, who, or who was a judge or who was, you know, any of these kinds of things. Um, and they just never had that. So, you know, they were dangerous because they, they never knew any limitations. I have a friend of mine who was in that class. I remember her telling me she's in the Harvard MIT um, HST program, which is an MD program that accepts 35 people a year um, to Harvard and MIT to do like a more more rigorous, intense MD program that hones in on the basic science and you do a lot of research. Um, it's a very challenging program. It's one of the most competitive programs to get in. And she was telling me that when she was nine years old, she was at a science fair at Milton Academy, and um, she saw somebody um, presenting. Um, the high school student had worked with some HST students and saw the Harvard. MIT thing, and she was asking about it, and she said that um, she said that you know I saw that I could go to Harvard and MIT for my MD, and I just decided that's what I was going to do, and nothing's changed. She decided at nine years old that this is what she was going to do, and I think that for me it was so it was so profoundly different than my experience. Um, and I thought that man, if I only had that, I would have this would have been a whole lot easier. If I only had that that kind of um, that kind of uh, opportunity, um, it would have been a whole lot easier. Um, and so I found over the over the time that a lot of this gap is great by mentorship. Um, there's a great there's a great um, program at the University of Maryland Baltimore County. So the University of Maryland Baltimore County is a school not unlike both of them. It's a it's a smaller state school. It's not the like premier state school in the state. You know, it's not it's not the the one that everyone talks about. But there's a the dean there um, takes average students, people that come out of high school as average students, and turns them into superstars. One of my good good friends is a, a, a UNBC. Uh, he has a Meyerhoff Scholars Program. Is what he brings it through. It's very rigorous and intense mentorship. It, they they fool them into thinking they can do anything, and it turns out they can. Um, people who are average students in high school can do anything, and it is really true. But once you once you buy into it. 
is, is um, once you buy into it, you're dangerous. You really are. And so one of my buddies who was in there, he was on the Forbes um, top 30 under 30 last year. Um, he came from very humble beginnings. And, you know, he developed, a, he went and did his interim PhD in Hawkins and graduated and started some startups where he, he was developing this technology that detects ovarian cancer um, from half smears. Um, right before the um, service um, and, and you realize, and then I meet all these people at these conferences about my heart fellow, and then my sister did her PhD there, and she became my heart fellow, and I had no idea when she joined, I didn't know what this was all about. I started looking it up as a 2020, it's on this and that, and I go to education conferences because I'm pa passionate about education. Um, and you see these people talk about this guy, and everyone, Duke is trying to emulate it. You know, all these places are trying to emulate this because he's had such great success, he said, not these kids come in and, and uh, very kind of average students in this Meyerhoff program. And um, he said 97% of them have gone on to graduate school. Um, and a lot of people I know, we accept two or three people every year. We beg them to come to Harvard, out of our class of 165, because they're just exceptional people that, from a diverse background that we don't normally see. We don't normally see people from just, you know, middle class or middle class backgrounds that went to state schools and things like that. So anyways, that's why I'm here. I'm here because I realize that's something that we don't have here. We don't have a strong alumni network of physicians who have done it, you know, and, and people who have done it and reach back and help and say, hey, you know, these are some of the things I learned and these are some of the things that can make it easier for you to get to where you're going. And these are things that I've seen my colleagues and my friends people who would be excellent physicians, people who graduated with me who are, unfortunately did not get into medical school because they had some of these trips and falls and they didn't know, they, they weren't, um, they didn't have parents who were doctors to kind of pick them up and let them know and, and to caution them um, for things that um, lie ahead. Um, and so, you know, they're, they're walking through this field of landmines without a metal detector and it's a challenge. Um, and that's the way we all were. And, um, you know, so, you know, and I had a lot of mentors that helped me, and so for me, my goal is to really be one of many mentors and to kind of reach out and find other alumni mentors that can really help you guys get to where you all eventually are going, if that's where you um, desire to be. I don't want there to be any kind of, um, um, it's, you know, system of, of privilege, basically, that keeps you from getting where you're going because you weren't born to a wealthy family or you weren't born, um, you know, or you, or you didn't have you know this or that kind of offer to you. So um, that's what the whole goal of these workshops are, is to kind of see. So I'm on the uh, committee for admissions at the medical school. I'm also a pre-med advisor for the um, Adams House at uh, Harvard College, the undergrad. Um, so I advise pre-med students. I write their committee letters. I do all of the things that um, they do. I have a small group of uh, 30 people a year that I meet up for. Um, and you know, I'm also a medical student recently gone through the process, um, you know, about to graduate in less than a year, thank God. Um, but, <laughs> uh, but uh, it, you know, it's been a process, and I learned a lot along the way. And, you know, people who are well-intentioned gave me some advice that, you know, that that's what they thought was true, but it really wasn't. Um, um, people along the way, uh, you know, in, encouraged me, um, or made attempts to encourage, uh, encourage me, but in some ways were discouraging in the way that they said it. I think that sometimes we've all had the experience. I mean, I, I remember going um, to, I remember going into my pre-med advisor's office and hearing like, oh, what are you gonna do? I'm, I'm, I'm applying in the application cycle. What are you gonna do if you don't get in? I say, what are you talking about if I don't get in? Like, I, I haven't even considered not getting in. You know, like, I have heard that, but, you know, so I feel like, you know, everyone, even I, I went through it, I had, you know, a four point of GPA, but you don't have to have that. I, I had that, and I, um, I still, there was still the doubt there. I was told by somebody, you know, who's, who's no longer here, um, that I shouldn't have wasted my money it's turning in my secondary application to Harvard Medical School because they were just doing it to take my money. So, I mean, in reality, obviously that was not true because I'm about to graduate this year. But, um, you know, I think we all hear these things and some people are more resilient than others. Um, and some people are more, so for me, I have this saying where I say, and, you know, I was foolish enough to believe I could do it. And I was uh, stubborn enough not to let anything get in my way. So, 
that's me. That's the way. That's the way I uh, I think about things, and that's um, you know I think that that is powerful when you're when you're able to do that. When you're able to just say, you know what, I'm going to do. It. I don't care what anybody says. I remember walking into this, these doors, had never taken a college class, and I had, was on Facebook, and I put on uh, Facebook, you know, Old Dominion University. I was so proud to add the uh, name, and then I put Harvard Medical School for Graduate School, um, MD. That's the goal. Anyway. So, and I made it. I made it, um, but I I went about it a different way than I think most people do. Um, I got a lot of research. I mean, I did a lot of research. I got I had a lot of mentors, and that really helped me. It's just around. Can you log in? Yeah, let me go ahead and get, get your that power set up for you. Um, but yeah, so so that was my story, and that's kind of that's kind of why I come here because there are a lot of myths that you hear, and there are a lot of there's this there's this vicious cycle of. When I say that, how many people um, got into medical school last year from from Old Dominion? Do you know off the top of your hand? About half. About half yeah, of the people yeah. who applied. A little under half. About people who applied. Yeah. I yeah, and then there, there was a big group of people who identified themselves as pre-med probably who didn't apply, right? <laughs> who didn't that. ultimately apply. Yeah, and I think that along the way, we we have all these landmines and we have all these hoops we're supposed to jump through, and I feel like we, we do a little reading, we talk to a couple of friends, we jump through a hoop, we know a person who's a senior, who like was really smart, we talk to them, they're super intelligent, super capable, would make a great position, and ultimately they didn't apply because they didn't feel that they were competitive. And what does that do to your psyche? What does that do to you? That makes you say, oh, well, this person, who's one of the most brilliant people I know, didn't do it, then what, what shot do I have? Um, and I felt that way at times. Um, but I wasn't going to let that stop me. I wasn't gonna let it, let it stop me from trying, uh, but you know, I, I think that for a lot of people, that's the case. That's the case, and and then that fulfilled it's a self fulfilling prophecy because when when those people do it, then it's like okay, well, this becomes the culture, this becomes the norm, and I'm here to help break the culture. We have a culture of people coming into pre med, not 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 you know, not really, basically having all the tools that they need to be successful in undergrad in a way that makes them competitive for medical school. Um, and then, you know, that those people ultimately um, don't, don't, aren't able to fulfill those dreams. Um, so, and to me, I take that very personally, because I want to I wanna go to the, the conferences at the American Medical Association and hang out with my ODU alumni. You know, I mean, that's important, really. I'm, I, you know, I love this school. So, um, anyway, I just am going to go through a couple of things. So today, it's a series of two two days worth of workshops. Um, forgive my very casual dress. So I just came from Boston. I brought the cold with me on Saturday. And today was the first warm day we've had. I've worn a coat every day since, like, October. So <laughs> so this is the first day I don't get to wear a coat, so forgive me for, you know, my shorts and t-shirt. But um, anyway, so introduction. So I want to do this exercise for a reason. So I found that one of the things that we lack here is a network with each other. We don't know each other. And it, a lot of times we have a lot of answers and we know a lot of different people. We have a lot of connections, but we don't really network well with each other. And I think that's another cultural thing. I think people from certain cultures are, very, are taught at an early age that like it's not what you know, it's who you know. And I think we've all heard that. But they, they, they walk it. They get to know everyone, and, they, and making those relationships is really important. Um, and I think at this stage is a, is a good time to start um, because those people, you, you have no idea. For me, I, I learned that when I was in the Navy, um, and I had a couple of mentors who I, I was thinking about going into entrepreneurship and, and encouraged me to network with people. And so I started doing that here, and I ended up using those people to craft my personal statement, which ended up being ended up being really good. So we'll talk about personal statement on another um, juncture tomorrow in that workshop. But um, these networks can become, you know, very handy. I've learned so much. So I wanted to make, I wanted to do these introductions. I wanted to pick somebody in there. I wanted everyone to pick someone else in the room that they don't know, that you've never met before. And I want you to just introduce yourself to them. And I want you through just normal conversation over five minutes, come up with something that you guys have in common. Not something like you go to Old Dominion University or you're studying biology or, you know, because that's like, how many people in here are studying biology? Raise your hand. Exactly. So, you know, not things like that, but, but and not that you have a passion for medicine, but something 
genuine that you didn't, you would be surprised that you, you guys had that in common. So find something you have in common. And then um, tell each other, you're not going to share with the group, but tell each other something that, you know, that, you, that no one else here in the room, in this room, knows about you. You know, you don't, be, don't, don't make it embarrassing, but just, but just say something. It'll be an interesting exercise. I'm going to give you guys five minutes. I want everyone to pick somebody else out. I want everyone to go through the exercise. It's gonna, it might make you a little uncomfortable if you're shy, but that's what this is all about. You need to learn how to do this. This is so important in your career. So I'm hoping we can do this. So go forth and conquer. Okay.